what's going on? So, this is the Q&A. And, yeah, I know a lot of people have been waiting for it. And I was supposed to do this, like, three weeks ago. But um, so much has happened since then that it's, like, it prevented me from doing it. And I'll explain in videos to come. But just get right into the questions. So, <clears throat> first question is by Sam Moore. Um, hey, Mark, how you doing? Do you think that once awakened, always awakened, that our soul will always have truth within us and we can never look back once we've passed the threshold to spirituality? I think, kind of like you said in the question, I feel like there's a threshold. Not necessarily like, so it's not like, um, because some people are on a spiritual path, some people are on a psychedelic path, some people are on this and that, but they're all very similar because once you get to a certain point in the path it's like you made it too far to turn back and it's like if you do turn back you'll forever be changed you'll forever be um different i think that you can use psychedelics a few times handful of times and come back with with nothing changed right but i feel like once you take it far enough even when you come back you're changed from it it changed you it changed your perspective on life on, on reality so i think that i do think once you're awakened though you can fall back asleep i i, I do think that it is possible even after you've gone far enough and and like it's just so far it's ridiculous um I think that you can also fall out of it. Um, it's it's not like it's not like a permanent change unless you want it to be. Like you have to want the change. You have to want it in order to keep it. But the next question Sam Moore asks is, um, oh, and I'm doing great by the way. <laughs> Um, let's see. Sam Moore also asks, What are some ways you remember spirit and can come back into a state of understanding slash understanding? Um, honestly, by just accepting what is, accepting reality, um, meditation, plants, herbs, Blue Lotus, <laughs> um, cannabis, um, I don't know, there's, uh, I don't know, a bunch of things, right? Like, just the realization, like, I wake up in the morning, I'm thankful that I woke up, um, like, I, I thank the universe for allowing me to wake up, whether it's, like, me saying I, I thank you, or, like, me saying, you know, to myself, just, I'm glad I woke up this morning, you know, um, realizing that I could have died in my sleep. Realizing that one day I'm gonna die anyways, everyone's gonna die. And as fucked up as this sounds, me remembering I'm gonna die reminds me why I'm alive. Me, it just brings back into perspective of what I need to be doing and what I should be doing and, and who I want to be, the man that I want to become. Because the man I am today is not the man I will be in the next 20 years. Like, I'm. So I try to think to myself, I'm doing this because the man I want to be, not the things that I want, or, or like I don't want to be known as the guy that's woke or known whatever, because none of that really matters to me. What really matters is me being okay with me. So, <clears throat> you know, when I'm just like being grateful, thinking about the path, thinking about reality, um, you know, it brings me back to consciousness, to spirit, to that understanding that, you know, life is a flash and, you know, we need to be more understanding with each other, understanding with our life situations and, you know, find our inner peace. Um, but yeah, let's see next question. Sam Moore asks, uh, another question, um, <clears throat> Do you think it is inherently bad to live a completely physical life without spirituality? Is the 3D a place where we can live freely and be who we want to be, or would that be a place only spirit knows? I love this question because 
it's so it's so deep and real because like this is a this is a complex question this is like the life is a paradox issue right where it's like a part of me wants to say yeah i do believe that it's bad to live a completely physical life without spirituality but the other side of me wants to say not really because we have free will and what is bad what is good you know what is these are just perspectives that we have um but the main reason why a part of me says yeah it would be bad it's because we are spiritual beings so not living a spiritual life is like i mean like terence said about psychedelics like going to the grave without a psychedelic experience is like going to the grave without ever having sex um you're missing part of life i guess is what i'm saying where it's like it's not bad to live a completely physical life, but it's just you're not living the completed version of life. You're only living one aspect of yourself because you're not just a 3D being. Your mind is interdimensional. So it's like to live a completely physical life is almost uh, ignoring the other side of yourself ignoring the other side of reality um but at the same time i i like the way you you said at the end where it's like is a 3d a place where we can live freely and be who we want to be or would that be a place only spirit knows because when it comes to uh, let's say people just want to live a completely physical life they don't want to be spiritual at all it's like when it comes to things like that why do they want to live a spiritual why don't they want to live a spiritual life why do they just want the physical life? Is it really what they want? Or is it what the society around them has told them that's what they want? Is it what the parents, their parents have told them or what their parents' parents have told them? Is is it what they're observing in the reality? And Or, or is it <clears throat> they have this view on spirituality, that spirituality is religion? Because spirituality is not religion. Um, and I think that a lot of people who are not in the spirituality, like community thing, whatever, I feel like a lot of people hear spirituality and they immediately think religion and like they, they step away, they like back away from it. Um, but, but yeah, I don't know. I do think that we have free will. So, I mean, somebody is completely um, capable of going through life with a completely physical life and never even noticing spirituality exists. But like I said, it's like going through life without ever having sex, without, I, I mean, there's so many parts of life, what is life, right? But like, there's so many different aspects of our life that we are physical and we are spiritual. So if you're only living one side, then you don't know yourself fully, um, in my personal opinion. Um, let's see. Okay. Another question by Sam Morris. This world is filled with this world is so filled with so many possibilities. What are some possibilities you want to actualize in your reality? Your goals, dreams. When on certain psychedelics, it almost feels as if every single moment is a clean slate to be filled with any path or opportunity we choose. Why do we choose why do we close our minds to all these opportunities? It's like the sober mind is just in one long cycle of sameness, not really coming to terms with every possibility possibility we encounter in this life. I love how you said it's like the sober mind is just in one long cycle of sameness because I I, I do agree with that. Um <clears throat> but First off, my goals and dreams, like, I have so many goals and dreams, it's insane. Uh, like, in insane. My main goal in life, though, realistically, is just... I realistically just want to help people. But, like, I'm trying to figure out a way to do that. You know, like, do I... And I guess in the beginning of my path, when I was just, like, you know, making my um, YouTube... My first YouTube channel, right? I would um say I wanted to wake people up. And at the time... I thought that meant I need to uh, tell people about psychedelics and DMT and people need to, you know, wake up their minds and understand that there's a whole other dimension that exists, right? But 
now it's like, I think to myself, I want to wake people up in whatever way I can. Whether it's wake people up to chase their dreams, whether it's wake people up and say, hey, there's a whole other dimension that exists, guys, that we can explore and we can, you know, we could figure, we can lay out the land to this whole another dimension. Um, we can talk to entities from other dimensions, things like that, but at the same, but now it's just like, now my goals have expanded. Like, when I was a kid, I wanted to be a famous rapper. Um, and that's all I did, like from 11 years old up until I'm now, you know, 24, 24, almost 25, and it's like, I still want to be a famous rapper, um, but not as much. Like, back in, when I was a kid, I was, I was chasing the fame. Now, I'm just chasing the feeling that music gives me, the feeling of being on stage, the feeling of what it feels like to be on stage and sing your song, or <clears throat> the feeling of how, what it feels like to make a song, to record a song. You know, I'm chasing that feeling of me mastering songs, because I love to master songs and master the audio and fuck with the frequencies, and, like, I love that shit, and I always have since I was a kid. And it's like, but even that, like, I'm trying to find a way to connect everything I'm doing. The music, the philosophy, the spirituality, even me trying to, like, uh, I'm going to relaunch my herbal business probably in the next two months or so. But it's like, even me trying to do the whole entrepreneur path and things, I'm trying to connect it all. Where it's all just going to help me try to wake up the world, and, and for lack of a better word. Um, and... Yeah, I do agree because on psychedelics, it feels like every single moment is a clean slate. But a lot of these goals and ideas that I've gotten recently, I've gotten from being in the psychedelic mind state, <clears throat> being in that psychedelic mind state. And then it's like, it'll all come out what I want. It all comes out like, yeah, I do want to be an entrepreneur. Yeah, I do want to help wake up the world. Yeah, I do want to help people look at the world through my point of view because I don't know, I just think that my point of view, right? It's my point of view and it works for my life. But at the same time, what works for me might not work for you, but at the same time, what works for me might work for you. So I'm, so it might help someone, you know? So I just wanna help people in whatever way I fucking can. And if that means that I talk about my struggles so people learn not to make the same struggles as me, learn not to make the same mistakes as me, that's great. Um, but yeah, my I guess my goals and my dreams are, uh, yeah, I guess the whole um, podcast thing, like, one of my main goals would be to get Dennis McKenna on a podcast and talk to Dennis. Um, but, like, besides that, like, everything I'm trying to just connect into one thing, like the music, the philosophy, the podcast, the entrepreneurship, the all of this and that. I'm writing books as well. So I'm writing two books right now. I should only be writing one. Um, but my, like, ADHD-type mind is like always doing this, 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 this. So I'm writing two books right now. Um, one's called My Path, My Journey, and which is basically like kind of my life story in a way um, that turned into a psychedelic path. Um, and then the other one's Theory Series, which Theory Series, the only reason I started writing Theory Series is because it's easy to write Theory Series because I'm just, I already, it's basically, it's just based off of the series that I made for my old YouTube channel called Theory Series. So, like, I'm just putting all my theories and ideas that I came, that, from psychedelics, and I'm just putting them all in one book. And that's going to be easy to write because it's already structured with videos. So I just basically have to watch the videos, write down what I said in the videos, and write down some more things, and then, boom, then that, then that thing will be done. But, um, those are a lot of my goals, and, uh... Yeah, my hopes and my dreams. And I really, like another goal, honestly, <clears throat> I want this YouTube channel to be back on the same level that my old YouTube channel was. <clears throat> I had 1,500 subscribers um, before I lost my old YouTube channel. So I guess, honestly, I would just like 15, um, yeah, 1,500 subscribers again. Um, I, I don't need... 20 million subscribers, I don't need 5 million, I don't need uh, 100,000, no. I would just like what I had back. Um, so like, 1,500 subscribers is good enough for me. Um, but yeah. Okay. <clears throat> Question by Tim Brennan. Hello Mark, hope you're having a great day. When is your birthday? Have you seen entities on 5 to 10 grams of psilocybin, such as owl, owl aliens, 
eagles, and intelligent mushroom eye creatures in your trips. Have mushrooms showed you <clears throat> what you really are? In my experience, I know now I am an alien, owl, angel, hybrid. You? So, first off, I was born on Christmas Day, 1993. Um, December 25th, 1993. Um, and honestly, the most mushrooms I've ever taken is four grams of mushrooms. I've never taken more than four grams yet. Um, I don't know why. Like, I, I genuinely don't know why. Um, I think a lot of times it's because I, I never really had enough. Um, there was one chance I had to take five grams, but then some shit happened, and then I couldn't, and then whatever, and just whatever. But all that's irrelevant. Um, but yeah, yeah, so I've never really, so I can't really speak upon that. What I can speak upon, though, is like, you know, with ayahuasca, with capsule ayahuasca, or with, uh, with the DMT experiences that I've had, um, they have shown me what I am. But it's not like, with the DMT, it's different because, and with ayahuasca, it's different because what it showed me, it didn't necessarily, like, I've seen many entities and beings, and, uh, there was one time on shrooms where I smoked DMT on the peak of a shroom trip where, um, I seen these reptilian light beings, um, and, but, I never thought to myself that they were me. I just, what DMT kind of showed me is that deep down, we're all the same thing. Deep down, if you really get down to deep down what we really are, we are that fucking higher dimensional being that split itself up into everything we know split itself up into the realities we know. It's like, so I don't think that I, this gets complicated because I believe that I'm a light being. I believe that I am a light being. So when you do DMT, you see these light beings, right? And there's many different types of light beings. But I believe that all of us will, I believe that the afterlife, I guess I should say, is DMT space. And when you go to the DMT space, I believe that you become a, pure essence of a soul you're just you kind of are shaped the same way you're shaped in this reality but just made of light um but then deeper than that those light beings are part of the whole and so after you become the light being you probably become the oneness and after you become the oneness you can recreate everything else and so i what psychedelics have shown me what i truly am is that i am a cell inside of god that's what it, it kind of showed me that I am, we are just cells that make up God. Um, it's like there's, there are millions of cells to make up my hand, millions of cells saying one cell in my hand is my human body is basically kind of where I'm getting at here. What I'm getting at is we are one cell in the body. Of God okay now but that one cell goes through changes and expands and grows and uh, goes through interdimensional travel and then becomes the oneness and when I say the oneness I don't mean like oh my god we uh, everything's all one what I mean is it's like the one mind that is creating the matrix creating Reality creating everything the one mind that created everything um, I believe that's what we are deep down in the core right now. I'm just a cell um, in the body But maybe one day we won't be just a cell in the body of the creator um, Let's see By the way, these were all the questions from YouTube Um yeah, I think that's it on YouTube. <clears throat> on Instagram, Awakening Truths asks, "What is your top three favorite psychoactive substances? What was your first? What was the first drug experience you've had? What got you into psychedelics and Terence McKenna? What were some of the most insightful thoughts that have opened up your mind, as it is?" And how did you apply the knowledge? Because knowledge is useless if it isn't applied. 
so fucking great. Um, first off, my top, what is my top three favorite psychoactive substances, huh? Huh. I don't really, this is going to be hard because DMT is the number one out of every list of everything, everything. Like for me, DMT is the number one thing. Um, like if I was to, what is the top three psycho, like psychedelic substances would be DMT, but but when you're talking about psych psychoactive substances, like, I don't know. Like, I, I don't want to try to, I don't want to include necessarily DMT because, uh, like I said, it just takes up space for number one. Because DMT is my all-time most favorite thing on the world, in the world. It's my most favorite molecule that exists on the planet um, because it taught me the most um, out of everything. Um, I've actually, I've done it the most out of every psychedelic and substance and thing I've ever done um, besides cannabis, but... Let me break this down real quick. DMT, technically. Cannabis. Kratom. Those are three substances. But without DMT, it'd be cannabis, kratom, blue lotus. Um, wild Daga would be in there, too. This is why, I mean, it's kind of hard for me, because... Um, yeah, Wild Dagger would definitely be in there too, but I don't know where. Um, I know Blue Lotus. Blue Lotus is up there because blue, not Blue Lotus, but Blue Water Lily because Blue Water Lily is, is is amazing. It's very deep, spiritual, um, insightful, um, introspective, peace, tranquility this is what I think about when I think about it. Um, but yeah, um, what was the first drug experience you've had? Uh, technically, DXM, technically, um, yeah, technically DXM, um, there was a lot, there was a while ago, um, I was like 13, okay, no, then technically it was cannabis, because I first smoked cannabis for the first time when I was 11 years old, um, when I was 11 years old, um, I remember I smoked it out of a happy can, like one of those, uh, you know, I don't know if you know what a happy can is, but that was the first time I ever had any experience with a psychoactive substance. Um, and yeah. Uh, what got you into psychedelics and Terrence McKenna? Terrence McKenna got me into psychedelics. <laughs> um, but what got me into Terrence? So I was researching space and interdimensional, well, I was researching space and space nebulas and uh, things like this online. Um, and then I remember I was researching the pineal gland. I was researching, you know, what is the pineal gland? Because my friend told me about the pineal gland, how thoughts create reality. He actually, he actually mentioned Bob Proctor. He told me about Bob Proctor and he was, my friend Mike T was like a businessman, still is. Um, but... Tell me about Bob Proctor, thoughts create reality, all this. The news telling me about the pineal gland, and you know you have to um, change your paradigm, and you know paradigm shifts, and and I started researching all this, and then it led me on YouTube, and on the side bar on YouTube, there was a video that said, "What is DMT?" And I'm like, "What is DMT?" And I click on it, and that was history. Um, I think I'm pretty sure it was a Terrence McKenna video. What is DMT? And then that was history, and then from there. You know, I've researched other psychedelic YouTubers, you know, from like uh, uh, Taylor Marie to uh, a bunch of other people who were talking about ayahuasca and DMT at the time. Um, but yeah, then after listening to Terrence for a year straight, a year straight, I didn't do DMT until after a year of already listening to Terrence. And after listening to Terrence for a year straight, I realized to myself, like, wow, either this man is insane or he's the most intelligent fucking person to ever live like this is what i was thinking in my mind because in before that moment like i still had that kind of view that drugs fuck up your mind that psychedelics can fuck up your mind um but when i listened to terrence i was like yeah i don't i don't i don't think they fuck up everyone's mind like i was thinking to myself terrence is like the most intelligent person i've heard speak because at the time of me listening to him in that first year i couldn't understand what the fuck he was saying like but I wanted to, though. 
I wanted to understand him so bad. That's why I listened for a year straight. And then I was like, whatever. I'm going to uh, attempt to uh, smoke DMT. And when I went to look for DMT, I couldn't find the DMT. Even the most biggest drug dealers in my town had no clue what the fuck it was. Um, but over a lot of hard work and trying, yeah, finally, you know, acquired some and, I, and it changed my life. But technically, before that, I did Salvia when I was 18 because that happened when I was 20. Like listening to Terrence and then, um, actually I started listening to Terrence when I was 19, smoked DMT when I was 20. Um, but like at 18, I did Salvia. And I smoked Salvia when I was uh, 18, but this was before I even knew what I was doing. I didn't even, when I, at the time of smoking Salvia, I didn't know what a psychedelic was. At the time of smoking Salvia, I thought it was going to be like fake weed because at this time I smoked fake weed before. So I went into Salvia so uneducated and it was my first psychedelic experience and it shattered me completely. Mm -hmm. um, but, but yeah. Um... Uh, what were some of the most insightful thoughts that have opened up your mind as it is? And how did you apply the knowledge? Because knowledge is useless if it isn't applied. Um, some of the most insightful thoughts are that everything is my fault. Everything. Some of the most insightful thoughts are like, everything is my fault. Um, thoughts create reality. Um... Life is dictated more on our actions than what we imagine. Um, and yeah, like, I don't know, that we are one, that the conscious thing that created the universe, we are a part of, so we also are creators and we also have control. Um, yeah, uh, just that love is inside of me, I guess. You know, like there was a time in my life where I was looking for love in other people, where I was looking for love in relationships, looking for love in friends, looking for love in this and looking for love in that and realizing that it's all in here. I have the love inside of me. And once you're at peace with yourself and become, begin to fall back in love with yourself, like that's when you really truly start to become powerful. Um, and honestly, how did you apply the knowledge? How do I apply the knowledge? I just do it, right? I give myself no choice. Um, I call myself out too. Like, I still get mad. Like, I'm never going to be the type of person that's like, um, I mean, I do meditate and I do do that. Don't get me wrong. But I just mean, I don't think I'll ever be the, what people envision in their head is like the typical spiritual teacher that never gets mad, that never whatever, that like always is in this peaceful, loving vibe. Like, I just, I'm real with myself. So I apply the knowledge the best way I can, but I also realize that I will fuck up because I'm in a human body right now. So like, I'm, I'm, I'm going to fuck up. There are going to be times where I'm like, I know that the love and peace is like, I have to have my inner peace, but there are going to be times where situations happen and I get mad. There are times when situations happen and I forget to apply the knowledge. I forget how powerful I am. I forget how much love is inside of me, but I try my hardest to call myself out when I forget, to look at myself, to be like, look at yourself, look at what you're doing, look at what you're thinking. Like, I, I don't, I try not to allow myself to think negative thoughts or to think shit like this, but, but once, it's just, it's part of the path, trying to learn to integrate, I'm trying to learn to integrate what we've learned, because I do agree, knowledge is useless if it isn't applied. So, if you know something, do something about it. That's literally how I, that's at least how I look at it is I know that thoughts create reality. I know that I could do whatever my mind, it, whatever my mind thinks of, I can do. Like Plato's idealism, like, you know, how the idea in our mind is usually more perfect than what we can write down. But we're getting closer and closer to the more perfect thing, just like we're getting closer and closer to phi. Um, it's, it's kind of the same thing where it's just like, um, I just, I just try to get closer and closer to applying it. I just try to apply a little bit more every day. Um, started a morning routine, right? I'm started a morning routine where I'm just thankful when I wake up. I work out in the morning. I do push-ups in the morning. Like, it's just this changing 
what my body is doing begins to apply the knowledge because it's just forcing myself to do this, you know, forcing myself into an evolution. Um, but yeah. Hulu Gulu Gulu on Instagram asks, <clears throat> do you speak German or do you want to learn it? Because it is a very suitable, is very suitable for philosophical and spiritual thinking. Um, so, no, I do not speak German. The only language I speak is English. Um, I do want to learn other languages, though. I would love to learn, um, I don't know, because I was just researching um, Plato and Socrates and things, like, I wouldn't mind learning, you know, Greece, or I wouldn't mind learning, uh, I mean, I guess I would love to learn German, too. I'd love to learn Japanese, Chinese. Um, I'd love to learn... To speak Spanish, like I'd love to learn to speak French. I'd love to learn to speak all these languages, but it's just, <clears throat> you know, it's weird because I've only I only know one language, so it's <clears throat> it's just kind of complicated. But if you have a YouTube channel or know of a YouTube channel that basically uh, teaches German, send it my way, and I will like. And if you if there is no YouTube channel, if you wanted to create a YouTube channel and and try to teach someone who speaks English German, um. You know, have videos like lesson one, lesson two, lesson three, lesson four, lesson five, and so forth and so on. Um, then I'll watch your channel. I'll subscribe to your channel and I'll watch that shit loyally. Um, and if you don't want to do that, then if you know anybody that has a channel like that already, then send it my way because I've thought of that a few times. Like I've thought of, I thought of, I thought of doing that with Spanish. Like just typing in on YouTube how to learn Spanish, and then there's a bunch of people that come up that are teaching Spanish. Um, I just did that with this philosophical class. There's like this college class on YouTube that um, college professor recorded his class, and it was a philosophical class. So um, with the internet nowadays, we can do this. We can learn anything. So uh, if if the information's out there and you want to send it my way, uh, I'll definitely pay attention and try to learn it. You know, it'd be dope. Okay. Another question by Hulu Gulu Gulu. Are you aware that no one ever experienced that the world stays in there? I, I don't know if this is a translation issue. Because um, I don't know if he wrote this originally in German. And then um, and then it translated. Because it seems a little off, right? So, like, <clears throat> are you aware that no one ever experienced that the world stays there when you go to sleep? And it's implications to a truth seeker that there's no reality independent from you, that the only one who feels <clears throat> is the spirit or consciousness you are, that the consciousness you are isn't a thought you can think, that whatever you think of isn't you. Now, I mean, it's deep, and I love what you said, but um, <clears throat> I guess... My interpretation of this question, because I might be wrong on, on like what exactly